Welcome to the Killick & Co podcast, 13th of May. Last week we had uh, generally a strong week for equity markets across the globe, led of course once again by Japan. And we'll take another look at that chart which uh, um, of the Japanese stock market which continues to rise and we'll also take a look at the currency which continues to fall. So those trends still very much underway. Um, we also had um, stronger markets from the UK last week. Gains of around between 1 and 1.6%. Uh, last week has kept the momentum going in equity markets. Um, reasons for this, um, a general perception that we are getting um, a, a, a better backdrop to the economy, um, but what I think is probably still the overriding feature for this market is the continued support for QE programs around the world. Last week we um, heard from Ben Bernanke in the US and I think the feeling around is that uh, rates will have to remain at lower for longer to ensure that the recovery does take hold. So net effect of all of this is that equities are in a slight purple patch at the moment, um, benefiting from the lower yields in alternative asset classes at the moment, driving the attraction towards earning yields in equities and the fact that actually if this QE programme continues to work, then, um, then we may well see a recovery being enjoyed later down the line. So a sort of win-win situation for equities at the moment, which keeps the momentum to the upside. Just to first of all, a glance at the diary for the week ahead, really dominated once again by UK earnings reports. Uh, as usual, those in black highlighted are the ones that Killick & Co will be producing research on um, post the results. These are the stocks that we are looking out for this week. So just turning to a few of the charts, um, I want to start with the UK, um, and this is the sterling chart against the dollar. And uh, the key here is that last week we saw further gains, although tempered a little bit towards the close on Friday. But um, we had stronger industrial production numbers coming out of the UK. Allied, uh, tallied with the uh, fact that we've also had reasonable retail sales numbers, there is a general view that we've got a little bit of a recovery underway in the UK economy at the moment. Still anemic, but heading in the right direction. And that hope that um, some revisions in the fullness of time will start to um, certainly reduce the uh, concerns over a double dip or treble, triple dip recessions um, have also helped uh, sterling in, in the uh, re recent markets. So um, as I say, we've seen a sort of rise up to close to 156 against the, um, against the dollar. So that has helped, as I say, fuel this uh, year-to-date year -to rally in UK equities, which is now into double digits uh, percentage returns. We're, we're looking at um, um, moving towards 13-14% um, growth in the FTSE for this year. So it's a very strong start to, to equities. Um, but still, I make the point that uh, many of the leading markets around the world, US markets, Germany markets, are through all-time highs, and the UK still has some 10% or so to run um, before it gets to that um, particular marker. So um, we're, we're still lagging over on a longer-term view. The, um, this is the chart um, year-to-date of the Nikkei. Um, in fact, if you were to go back sort of a, a couple of extra months, the trend would have continued. We're up a nearly 80 odd percent in Japanese stocks, um, and that really has been the main feature of markets during 2013. This chart here shows the weakness in the yen um, versus the dollar, and moving into sort of new high territory last week, it burst through the 100 yen level up to 101 at the moment. And I think will continue to remain a theme. It's a theme we've been discussing since the beginning of 2013, that we expect currencies to have much more volatility towards each other as individual nations take more domestic um, routes towards resolving their own uh, situations. Um, and uh, obviously Japan very much led the way, and we've seen a 30% depreciation. So whilst headlines from G7 committees will continue to talk about cooperation around the world and that, uh, um, that, that uh, moving towards a so much lower currency to resolve exports is not on the agenda. Um, this 30% move must be causing some concerns um, in uh, other areas of the G7 at the moment. I want to also look at a sort of an emerging uh, currency story here, and this is really the US dollar versus the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar really has been one of the strongest currencies over the course of the last five years, um, relating to the commodity boom that kept it uh, away from some of the nastier impacts of the financial recession that impacted on the Western world. But as that commodity boom seems to be coming to an end, it is exposing the high debt levels in Australia at the moment, and maybe some declining trends. It is forcing 
uh, Australia now to continue cutting interest rates. We saw another interest rate cut last week um, from, from the uh, central bank there and it is causing some weakness now. So there's an emerging trend in the weakness of the Aussie dollar um, at the moment and uh, one wonders whether they are going to be sort of heading in the direction of, uh, of what has happened in Japan recently. So um, just a chart that we'll keep an eye on over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, really want to just continue to focus on these yields on the bond markets. These ten-year ten-year paper um, is, um, is 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 coming down. This is uh, this is the chart of the Italian yields. Um, just really to make the point that George Soros was interviewed at the weekend, um, saying that the calm that's being seen in the Italian bond markets at the moment won't last. Um, his his view is that we will continue to return to high yields within the Italian markets at some point. Um, um, in the near future, was and so um, so I think um, just just to bear that in mind, given the influence he can sometimes have, well, his last comment on gold seemed to be well timed before a big fall in the price of that commodity. Um, just um, in terms of the equity, just want to pick up on one story from last week, which was British Telecom. This chart that we're showing here is actually a 10-year picture of BT. Um, so actually, uh, the, the sort of height of the sort of recent economic period of 2007. Um, here, um, where the shares hit 250, and obviously with the high debt burden and obviously high pension burden, um, the shares came off um, significantly down to a low approach in 50 pence a share in 2009. But really, the restructuring of the business, um, particularly on the commercial side of the business, and the launch last week of uh, the um, sports package, which is putting a direct competition towards Sky, and certainly hoping to link in with the company's subscriber base for its broadband. And, uh, activities um, helped propel the stock to new all-time high territories um, for BT at over 305 pence. So um, certainly a good performance there last week from a stock that has often been ignored in the last few years.